It says, uh, but now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an, oh, look at it, idolater. What does that mean? Idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. Now, this is in the context of him saying, like, I didn't mean that you can't ever talk to anybody who's a sinner. Because you can't escape the world. You go to the market, you're buying your food, the girl's going to have some tattoos and big holes in her ears and weird colored hair, and there's a good chance she's a pagan. You can buy your food, it's okay, you can't leave the world. But, she says, I'm a Christian. I want to come to the Lord's Supper, but I like my girlfriend. All right. Now, we're not even to eat with such a one. You know, all the talking I've ever done about closed communion, this verse has never brought, been brought up. And you know what? This is the best verse I've ever seen on closed communion. Right there. Right? They say they're a Christian, but they are sexually immoral, covetous, an idolater, a reviler, a drunkard, an extortioner. Now, you might say, but wait, what about the Reformed who are Christians and love the faith, but they just don't agree with the Lord's Supper? Okay, well, maybe we're in a little bit of a different closed communion category there, which is you're asking me to give you something that you don't believe in. So why would you want that from me? It's really weird that you want me to give you the body and blood of Jesus that you don't think is the body and blood of Jesus. Really weird, right? But now, when we are dealing with other Lutherans in America, by and large, we're dealing with those who are pro-abortion. They are pro-LGBTQ. Uh, they are pro um, all manner of anything except for what Scripture says morality is. Uh, so, yeah, I think this very much applies. Now, here's the trick. You know what? I've been to a lot of pastor's conferences, and I don't mind having a beer. I don't. Hmm. But I've had too many sometimes. And there's, there's maybe more drinking in the LCMS than... There should be. Mm. You take that for what it's worth. Don't blame all your pastors. Like, watch your own back a little bit here, right? Mm -hmm. Right? What does it mean to be a drunkard? It doesn't mean you don't have a drink. Right? Um, but it does uh, talk about a certain way of drinking, a certain reliance on it. It's not even talking about alcoholism. Like well, it, and is it just alcohol, though, too? Uh, yeah, to be inebriated, uh, to be one whose mind <clears throat> is not really your own anymore, uh... Yeah, that's a good question. You can be drunk on many things, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, <laughs> so, and, you know, idolater is here as well. Like, uh, you know, what, what is a reviler? The, the point he is really making is that, uh, yeah, uh, the Christian community should not put up with open public wickedness. Mm -hmm. And ultimately then, uh, the table is n not for those who, who do not repent. It's for those who repent. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you're not sinners. It's that you're repentant sinners. Like you, you really want to stop. Right. Yeah. And when you're dealing with a group that says, oh, we don't want to stop. This is good. This evil's good. Well, okay. Yeah. With such a one, do not even eat. So yeah, I think, I think absolutely. Um, your question is right. That this, this verse does apply to close communion in those scenarios. Uh, we are not to eat with those who profess to be Christians, but do not walk as Christians. It's pretty straightforward. How, you're so judgmental, Pastor Fisk. How can you judge other people? Look, look, I'm saved by grace. I don't know about you. <laughs> so this brings, this brings to mind um, something that was brought up in my presence. Um, someone was sharing how um, a family member had chosen to go, had chosen a lifestyle that, the homosexual lifestyle. Uh-huh. And um, the rest of the family had not um, shunned that person, mm -hmm. but had openly, is open about like, you know what, we don't agree with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but then extended family has shunned the family of the homosexual uh -huh. um, because they haven't excommunicated or shunned oh. the homosexual. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Let's, let's um, not say homosexual. Let's say um, 
unrepentant same sex attracted individual. Okay, unrepentant same sex. Someone who is practicing adultery. Individual. Practicing um, right. uh, a, a form of adultery that must be adultery. It is sex outside of marriage. Mm-hmm. Practicing sex outside of marriage. Yeah. Adulterer. Yeah. Um, same sex adulterer. You could say yeah. that. Um, so I so my um, initially speaking with this person, I was like speaking with the person who has the sibling who's um, an adulterer in a same sex relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, I it was like, well, I think your family is choosing the right thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be open about how they disagree, but then not um, cutting that person mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. But then I, as I was listening to you, it was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right Does that person say they're still a Christian? Thing. Well, yes. Well, see, then, So yeah. we actually uh, yeah. have this. So yeah. the question was about LCMS versus ELCA. Yeah. So yeah. the family is LCMS, but then the adulterer has become ELCA. Yeah, because it's approved there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, text says what it says. I mean, what do you want me to do? I just <laughs> want you to, I mean, like, how do we, how, what would, what should my thought process okay. be behind this? What should my My thought process is that be? if, if my children choose the way of the world, mm-hmm. then it is my task at some point to tell them that as much as they're my children by blood, they're not my children anymore because I'm going to live forever. They're not going to, not, not with me. And so I'm not going to sit here and pretend everything's fine at dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to say it's all okay. I'm certainly not going to invite their significant other quote unquote. What a horrible phrase. Um, Their, their uh, adulterous partner into the house. Mm -hmm. Not a chance. Uh, now, I'm, this is kind of a new edge for me, too, to even start thinking this way, but I just don't know how you cannot think this way if you take the text of Scripture seriously. Mm-hmm. We've been... Well, it's more and more becoming a thing. We've been... <laughs> so we can't just not think about it. We've we been have to fleeced, have an idea. We've been fleeced into thinking that the Christian's job is to not give offense, mm-hmm. that that's our entire goal is to have them be okay with what we believe. And that somehow, if we are just nice enough, then maybe they'll come around. Right. But that if I'm mean, that somehow I've pushed them away. Right. This is all a big fat lie. And what it's done is it's gotten us to not give witness to what we believe, ultimately, Mm-hmm. Uh, but to give a seat at the table to licentious, idolatrous, sorcerous wickedness. And if we can't draw that line, if we can't believe that Jesus said, I come to divide families, mm-hmm. but instead we think, oh, I've got to keep the peace in the family because that's what Jesus would want. That's not what Jesus would want. Jesus wants you to have integrity with what you believe. And so in that regard, what are you, you bring back this individual, you have Thanksgiving, you don't let their adulterous partner come, but they, they're still willing to come, right? And they'll sit down at dinner. What are you going to do? You just can pretend like everything's fine. You're going to pretend like they're not worshiping Baal. You're going to pretend like they're not a prostitute effectively. Worse, Mm -hmm. worse than a prostitute. A prostitute would actually be a healthier trade. Rahab got saved, man. You know, Rahab believed and it wasn't like she just shut down her shop that day, you know. So um, this is not Sodom and Gomorrah, or this this is Sodom and Gomorrah. It's yeah. it's it's a, and it's not about like, oh, I have these feelings. Um, I'm a person who's a Christian who has these feelings. I know they're wrong. This is I'm a person who thinks I'm worshiping Jesus, but these feelings aren't wrong. This is how Jesus made me. He wants me to live this way. What am I supposed to talk about at dinner? The Christmas tree, the movies we watched, mm-hmm. how great everything. Oh, let's watch. Well, let's cheer for the Bears this weekend. That'll be okay. Like, to me, I'm not saying it's what anyone else needs to do, but to me, I'm, no. No. My one chance to get you to repent is to say to you, 
I'm ashamed of you. Mm. And that shame's not coming to my dinner table. 